Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, uh, my name is Chinyere Vanilla Okire. Oh, I am, hi. The admin, hi. I am the Admin and Human Resource Officer at um, Tungsten Entrepreneurship Holding. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Okay, and I'm also the moderator for this section, Entrepreneurs Life in HR. Okay. Okay, I will be asking you some questions and it will be an interactive section. I hope you're prepared because I'm super excited for this. And it will be nice to see you out there. I am here on a personal capacity. Uh, I am not in any way representing my organization. So yes. whatever I'm going to be sharing will be things that are particular to me, my journey, um, and of course my, my experience in, in the field of um, human resources, okay? Okay, ma'am, no problem. That's what I actually want to um, find out more because, and I think I found out my um, calling was basically on HR and admin. So I want to also learn more, and I think people on this section too want to learn more about how you um, got to where you are right now because I know it's okay. not an easy journey as a woman, also. Definitely. So, Definitely. <laughs> I'm going to be asking you a few questions. Is that okay. okay by you? Please, please go ahead. Um, I will start with the first question. Um, how did your um, earlier choices and experience, like how did you choose to become who you are right now as a human resource, um, senior human resource officer? Like how did you, how did you know that um, this is the passion you want to pursue? Okay, so um, just to give background, um, we, we know my name already. My name is um, Uyimogu. I am a HR yes. professional. I've been in the industry for 10 years and above, a little above 10 years. Um, so in, in response to your question, right, I think I would say that um, the field of human resources, I, I wouldn't say I stumbled into it, right, but I would say that um, my interest, my passion, uh, my personality somewhat, you know, drew me to the profession of human resources. So my educational started off, my educational career started off in law. I am a lawyer by qualification and practiced law for a couple of years. And then life happened, right? Um, moving from yeah. Abuja to Lagos, um, I did go for an interview for a, a, a legal officer role. When that didn't happen, I was heading out, you know, disappointed you know, downcast, and then I was met at the lobby, and then I was told, hey, um, you didn't make this interview, but, you know, you seem to have these other skills, and then we would like you to also try to do something else. And I looked at it to say, okay, fine, if this didn't work, this is a good opportunity. And then the idea was, okay, you could do this for a short while, and then when an opportunity opens up in, in, in law um, or in the legal department, and then you can move. So that was how my, you know, HR career somewhat started because it was customer experience and its service, but it was a lot more around administration, you know, um, organizing and planning. So from there, of course, um, I did that for a while and then I moved on to a core human resource consulting. Okay, so of course, just like you, I was a newbie. Um, but then I was very much interested in, you know, organizing, helping out, solving problems, and just taking care of things. You know, I would stumble into things. I just had that general passion to add value and cause changes to happen. So looking back and then seeing how I've progressed till now, I've moved from consulting into core HR generalist roles. And then right now into a middle management, you know, human resources, um, helping businesses solve, you know, critical issues and just helping them to maximize performance overall. Wow. Um, in a nutshell, yes, I think that has been the journey so far. Wow. I am sure it's super exciting and also has its own uh, tears and um, some tough decisions that you made along the way. Um, yes. So moving on to the next question, um, what would you consider are the critical success factor for professionals and um, entrepreneurs in the HR industry? 
Okay, so I think um, to answer that question, right, I personally, I, I see critical success factors in two folds. Um, one fold being the technical, right, and then the other being the behavioral. And I believe the two go hand in hand um, for every professional, especially those in human resources, to be able to succeed. So I would say that for me personally, um, what made it successful for me or what, what caused my success story was that I knew what I required uh, um, technically and I also knew what was required behaviorally. Um, and by time, I would work on improving my behavioral skills and capacity and also improve my technical skills and capacity. And I always look at it this way and I tell you know people that I come across to say, um, when we hire people, right, and when we go out to look for talent, um, we usually would, you know, most times focus on the technical bit. But of course, the times have changed now that we're very much also focused on behavior and attitude, because you find out that a lot of times people come into industries, um, they have the technical requirements, but along the line, when they get fired or when they get to lose their jobs, is usually because they didn't have the right attitude to see them through um, in, in their jobs. So critically, um, for everyone to succeed in HR, you must know technical requirements and you must also know what you require behaviorally. You know, for, for the critical success factor for every HR professional is to understand the operational activities, okay, um, for the business that they work in. So times are gone when we say we're HR professionals and we don't know what our business is doing. And we can't speak the language of our of our senior management. So when I say senior management, I'm talking of the probably the CEOs or the general managers. HR professionals now, for them to succeed, need to understand the environment and the market within their business operates. So if you're working in the financial industry as a HR professional, you should know the financial market and should be able to speak to how your business is thriving in that industry. Okay. Um, lastly, but not the least, a HR professional can only succeed when they begin to think like an entrepreneur, right? You begin yeah. to have the mindset to maximize your performance and to achieve results. And like we all know, every business is there to make profits, to generate mm -hmm. revenue, right? Yes. So as, as HR, even though our jobs, you know, primarily is to ensure that we have the right, and the right talent, we should also ensure that we're helping our businesses to maximize their performance. That way they continue to generate profit, they continue to succeed in no pattern. So I think in a nutshell, you know, that really um, my focus, you know, when it comes to um, determining what can help you to be successful in, in the HR industry. Okay. Um, thank you so much. And um, this is really, um, it has opened my mind more. But um, there's something that has really been like troubling me. It's how you manage um, the mental um, stress and the uh, emotional um, threats that comes with um, human resources. Like, for example, if you had, you have a very close friend in the office and you were asked to fire this person. Like, how do you handle that? Um, because for me, I, I think the first time I was, I had to fire my friend in the, um, the office, I kind of cried because it's like my first time doing it because this person is like my family. So see, going through that whole process, it, it kind of changed me. And when they say, uh, oh, HR, they're always wicked and always mean. Oh, if they call you to HR office, there's this oh, high blood pressure and all that. And I try to like, in my um, my organization correctly, I try to like balance it. So in as much as I'm trying to, to not be uh, a bully or to not be, I have to also enforce the law, but then you get called names and then you now have to fire your friend or your closest colleague or something. How do you handle that whole emotions that comes with it? Because I won't lie to you, my first firing, I cried. Like, it got that, to me. That, that, that's, that's what makes you human, okay? And I would also say that when I started off as a junior HR professional, a lot of things were difficult. And it's totally fine. And I think that's what I'll encourage everybody here, right? Yeah. Um, the earlier we begin to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, 
then the better for us, right? Because vulnerability is usually not weakness. It just goes to show that there's that humanness in you, okay? It is a, it's always a tough call when you have to exit people. But I think what I, what I will leave for us here, and I will speak based on my personal experience, because like I said earlier, exiting mm -hmm. from business is always tough. But then you need to realize that you're there to carry out a responsibility, okay? There's a reason why you're the one who is having that responsibility and you must have to carry out that responsibility. And as much as you show empathy, you should also not show weakness in carrying out your responsibility. So the first question you ask yourself or anybody would ask themselves is, was the due diligence done in that process? You know, what brought about you exiting? It could be performance related. It could be behaviorally, um, where you begin to talk about disciplinary measures, okay? But I want to believe that no one would set out to exit without a cause and a reason. So once you know that you have followed the due process and the final verdict or the final decision is for the person to be exited, then you'd have to bear that um, responsibility and you have to do it in line with the business policy and processes. Okay, so like I said, it's difficult to exit, especially when you've grown close to people and in organizations where there is, um, you know, friendliness and, you know, there is good engagement and experience, people are more like family. So when yeah. it gets to the point where you have to make a tough decision, it can really be tough, but you'd have to do it. And sometimes if you realize that, you know, you're not able to handle it and then your emotions are going really rub off on the process, you can actually escalate to your reporting line manager, you know, to see if there could be some leeway for you, especially if you're start, starting out your career. But you get to a level where that cannot be an excuse anymore because expectation is, you know, you have really built the capacity and you have gained the experience and you should be able to handle. Okay, so I would encourage us on the call not to show weakness, um, but when you find yourself, you know, broken down because you have to make a tough call or make a tough decision, you have to brace up to the challenge and you have to do it in line with what business has provided for you. Okay? Yes. Um, but yes, these are some of the challenges that you would experience in the course of the career, but then you would outgrow them. And then when you do it a couple of times, you will realize that it is part of the job and it has to be done. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really um, an eye opener because I would like to you the first time I cried and I think my line manager had to to call me at that time to like talk to me that this is how it is done and she knows that mm -hmm. I'm kind of this um disorganized me because I was now I said making so much mistake at the office because I was emotionally gone at that point. But I think um hearing you speak um I'm, I'm 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 more open minded now. And I want to ask um your course of ten years through the HR and uh, did you like go for any courses? Did you like um add up to your qualification because i am i i just have a bnt in mass communication i i just started out hr like i said it was it was a trial for me i wanted to see if i could do it and when i started out and i, I enjoyed the job i think this is where my strength is and i think i found what i love doing but now is there any calls like for people listening out there that to add to some of us that actually did not do this uh, human resource and um, courses. And do we have to join any organization? Do we have to join any um, structure? Like, is there something for us out there to add to our qualification or we should just go in the experience? Um, um, so I would, um, Chinyere and to everyone else listening, right? There's something I always, you know, go by and that is that, you know, no matter where we find ourselves and no matter what level we get to, learning and knowledge is a continuum. It's something that has to follow us to our grave. I think, you know, if I'm to look back, you know, um, at my younger self, I would say that, you know, continue learning something I should never have sort of, you know, put under the radar. For here also, like every other, every other, you know, profession, right? Yes. Um, learning is something must continue to happen now if you want to start okay so i believe in being superior as against being you know standard 
right mm -hmm. or or just being good I want to achieve, you know, the next level that is superior to just being good. And if that must happen for anyone listening, I um, want to get to that highest peak where you're looked up to, you're like a role model and people come to you. Um, you become what we call, um, you know, um, a, a thought leader in a profession, right? You become a thought leader in your field. In other words, people come to you to get knowledge, people come to you to get opinion things to learn. So that I, I read law, um, studied law in school and uh, practiced law for a while and then I stumbled into HR like earlier because you know it came as an opportunity. I didn't go out to get into human resources. But I realized that when I got into human I need to improve myself technically like I said earlier. I need to understand the rudiment of human human resources. And of course, when we talk about rudiment, we're talking about the, the basics, you know, the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, you should be able to know how to recruit. You should be able to know how to identify the right talent. You should be, know, be able to know how to talk about or practice compensation and benefits and payroll management. These are the foundations, right? Yes. Um, so if, yeah, there are programs out there. There are institutions out there that are focused on human resource training. You know, we have them across um, the globe. Um, in Nigeria, we have the very popular CIPM, um, which I am an associate. That was my first step. I needed to go through that training. I got a diploma in human resources because I needed to be well-grounded, right? In addition to my experience, which I got um, in my first place of work, I also needed to be well-grounded in human resources. So I pursued the diploma um, with, um, CIPM, and I didn't stop there. You know, in addition to the regular training that I would stumble onto, I would even pay for with my funds. I didn't always wait for my organization to send me to trainings. I made sure I was deliberate in improving myself. So I would save out some money and I would pay for some courses that I would go for just to acquire knowledge. And let's not also forget that it is one thing to go to a workshop or a training and get knowledge. It's another thing to begin to practicalize and impact, you know, in your workplace the knowledge that you've acquired. Only at that point do we say that learning has happened, right? Not just when I come into the classroom and I just listen. So I have listened and I have taken it in, but when I get back to my workplace or in my own personal environment, how am I able to begin to practicalize all of those things and how do I make it a part of me? And until that time that we can then say that truly I have adapted and then learning has happened because it has become a way of life. Okay, so I would encourage us to look out for, um, you know, HR related programs. Um, there are very few ones on, you know, those websites that we can identify to keep improving yourself. It's important to continue to learn. That way, um, you continue to deliver superior performances and wherever you find yourself. So, yes, um, I also did mention that after my CIPM, um, some couple of years back, I also badged my certificate um, as a senior HR professional with the international body, um, HRCI. So, um, yes, there's also the SHRM, which is Society for Human Resource Management, um, based out in the US. So, there are lots and lots of institutions um, that offer HR training. Um, that can improve our experiences and our knowledge as well of human resources. So, yes, I would encourage that we continue to learn. Kitchenia, you're muted. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, um, I just tried to um, register for the CIPM, but I think they're having network issues, so they're not like... Um, giving me a feedback email regarding to that. But thank you so much. Um, this is like an eye opener. So um, just to take us more, um, I would say what advice would you give to your younger self at the start of your career? Like what advice would you give to your younger self? So to help us that are also coming up also. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I, I, you, you hear me say, you know, if I were to look back. So back in the Day. This was, you know, um, maybe right after, after you know, leaving the law uh, practice and going to HR. Um, back then, you know, you would be satisfied with what you have already, you know, acquired or gained in terms of back in the days. So if I were to go back, 
I would say that learning would have been one thing that I should never be doing. Right? I should have continued to seek out opportunities to learn, and not just to learn, you know, um, hate, you know what I was focused on doing. I would advise my young myself to try my hands out in many other opportunities. <laughs> because if you were to go back then, that would have even such as COVID, and would would be in a now where you know a lot of things are evolving and then we are becoming too digitalized um i would of course would never have believed it right so one never stop learning um never stop thinking of ways to improve yourself very critical and important secondly plan okay like we know if we don't plan, um we tend to fail along the line so second advice continuous you know working goals very important at time make sure you have one tangible thing you want to achieve as a human being okay don't let the years go by without having focus on what you want to achieve it could be personal it could be career it could be you know lifestyle but ensure that you always have goals that you're working on and you want to achieve i would also tell myself to challenge challenge myself more Okay, um, I got I got scared a lot back in the days, and then I would you know shy away from taking up responsibilities. And I can tell you, everyone right now, that you know I take up I take up challenges, and and like we say commonly, you know I do it afraid. I don't go in doing it because I have it all put together. I go in doing them because I know yes I will make my mistakes, but then I will learn from my mistakes, and then I will do better. As against not trying at all. Okay, so I would say challenge yourself, um, take up more responsibilities, and just see how things unfold. I think lastly, I would tell my younger self to focus more on my strength. Go back in the days, I would celebrate my weaknesses so much, and it would keep me down for a very long time. So now that I know better, I would tell my younger self to focus more on your strengths and little on your weaknesses, really, um, so that you know your strength will keep pushing you um, to remain focused. And just capitalize on the tax at hand as against what you feel to do and how you have failed. Okay. So yeah, that would be my my that would be the few advice I'll give to my younger self. And I'll just recap. Um, I said firstly to keep learning, to continue to learn and seize opportunities of learning. Um, secondly, to challenge myself, um, you know, pick up tax, pick up challenges, even though they're outside of my comfort zone, I would do them and I'll do them afraid. And then I'll learn from my mistakes and I'll keep pushing. I also said um, to focus on strengths and not very much on our weaknesses. Okay? okay. Yeah. So those, those will be the advice I'll give to my younger self. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. I'm very sure that for this short time that we have listened to you, our mind has um, been opened to so much expectations and so much determination. But I'm um, going through the chat. I can see Jude Unima um, sent in a question. Uh, he said, um, you spoke about developing the right attitude as a kit for success in HR. Can you tell us how this right attitude can be developed, especially for those who just who are just beginning um, their journey in HR? That, that's a very good question, Jude. Thank you so much for asking that. I would like to put it out there that when it comes to attitude, right, we all know that they are in it. There are things that come from within, okay? A lot of times, behavior and attitude are not necessarily taught in a classroom, okay? Yes. There are things you need to practice. You practice attitude, you practice behavior, and over time, it becomes a part of you, okay? So I think I'll give you a practical instance. Um, you want to be able to show empathy. A lot of us don't have that attitude. We are, we are not wired to show pity or show empathy to others, right? So it will take a very conscious effort from each and every one of us to know and be deliberate around our environment and around people that we interact with to be able to show empathy or practice empathy, okay? So you may not have it. You may be somebody who naturally um, you're not moved and you're not an emotional person. But you begin to practice emotions. You begin to be more sensitive to what other people are passing through. That way, you continue to practice empathy. So in the workplace, for instance, I'm a line manager, and of course, I have people that report into me. 
I know what the policy states. And I know sometimes I have I have reporting lines or my subordinates who go against the policy. So how did I begin to? And of course, when I started out, I would want to be very astute, you know, go by the books, go by the policy, give my queries and all of that. But over time, when I started getting my 360 feedback around my, my attitude towards people, we always came out as, you know, you, you're a bit insensitive. You don't think to understand what people are passing through. And you're always very firm around what the policy is saying and all of that. But when I begin to think about it deeper, right, I, I, I told myself to say, going forward, you have to start asking questions as against taking final decisions. So if I had a team member who would go out of line, as against sending a query or giving a, an oral warning, I would want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to understand the root cause of why he or she did what they did, right? When I started practicing that one-on-one -on -one questioning, I would I began to see that there was a reason why they behaved the way they behaved. And if we're able to speak to that reason or the root cause, you know, that made them act the way they did, we solved a lot of problem. Okay, I could advise them timely and I could offer them solutions outside of work, right? I could I got more personal with them to understand how they were faring at home. And for those of them who were women like me and starting out because my kids are quite big now so i could get away with a lot of things but for some of my mates who are just starting out you know having toddlers i could understand that you know back the home front isn't so easy and if they are dropping the ball in the office i should be able to you know practice empathy mm -hmm. so like i'm um, jude it is practice okay um those attitudes if we don't have them like i mentioned empathy if we're not able to practice vulnerability for instance you need to practice it and you know because they are intangible they are in it it's difficult but we practice we begin to build them up and over time you know it becomes a part of you i think one thing i would also want to drop with us is with attitudes a lot of modeling is important when we have superiors who behave the way we want or the way we want to begin to behave it also works out well a lot of time so Looking at the right people, you know, modeling the right behavior also helps, also helps to build those right attitudes um, that are required for us to succeed in our HR journey. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, is, um, just for me and for the rest of um, listeners, um, is it okay if we can follow you on LinkedIn to... And follow us back just for in case um someone wants to reach out for a support system from you because you're quite experienced and I think we'll be needing so much support from you in regards to HR and um in regards to people's management. Is that the okay, camera? Please, that is fantastic. I am open to to all of that, please. Um, I know you have my 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 handle. If you can maybe drop it on the chat or I'll try to drop it myself. So please feel free to connect. Um, and I'll be honest, um, I'm hardly on LinkedIn. I try my best to be on it, but whenever I come on it and I see messages, I respond. And then of course, I also get a lot of questions. I tend to, I, I respond as well. So please feel free. Um, if you just put in my name, um, it would come up, but I'll make efforts to get my LinkedIn um, the actual link and put it on the on the chat room so that you can just quickly or more easily get across to me. Okay, man. Thank you so much, man. Um, I'm going to ask a very selfish question because it's from my own end. Um, for the CIM, CIPM that I uh, I am uh, for me now, I am trying to join. I think they're having okay. issues with giving me some feedback for me because okay. they asked me to register as a new member i've done like over 20 times like in the face of one hour and i've not gotten any email or anything um is there something that can be done about it um so like um i know cipm now there's this um rush um because the conference is next month so there's a lot of rush around registration for the conference and it may likely be the same set of people who are focused on the conference registration that should also be supporting with the new entrants for the exams. Um, what I will say, um, Chinyere, is you have my LinkedIn now and you have my contact, I want to believe. I will share some contact with you. I think it will be best to put a call through to someone who is in the exams um, unit 
So if it's the exams you want to get on with, yes. then the person can best give you those responses. But I think that I can do. I have some numbers that I usually would reach out to when I need to reach out to them, especially for my office um, matters. So I can share that contact with you. But I would advise I just put a call to, to them. If the website is not working, make a call and the media can redirect you to another link or something that you can do quickly. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. Um, we just really want to um, in, um, respond to no other questions. Um, I want to thank you for having um, this time out with us. I, I have learned so much and um, it's um, exciting and um, daring. And I think I'm ready to take this next step. And I'm very sure that the listeners out there are willing and ready to um, push harder um, with their career. Because um, before this um, summit, I would like, I was having some, okay, um, should I, should I not? But having this talk and having this summit with and experiencing and having a talk with you, I, I think I'm determined. Okay, we have one more question. Yes, I just saw that. I just saw that. Okay, um, this is from Favor Emmanuel. Owing to your experience as an HR officer, can you suggest or propose better HR ethics that other HR officers can adopt? Okay, I'm favor, you know, there's a million and one, a million and one ethics HR officers. And I must say that, you know, things that apply to every human being, applies to human resources, because it's simple, we manage people, right? We manage yes. people. We, we are there to make people better. When people are made better, the organization is better. Right? Humans are the biggest asset organizations have. So I'll just sort of give you a few that I, like I always say, I'm here in my own capacity and my experience. I think one of the ethics that I have sort of built strongly and it comes very forward in everything I do is fairness. Um, just like we call it equal opportunity and fairness. A lot of times, you know, as humans, we tend to allow sentiments to sometimes play out. Um, I won't delve into the, the, the obvious ethics, you know, which is, um, you know, don't, don't practice nepotism. You know, you have to have integrity and all of that. Those are basic, you know, all of those ones. But I think the ones that I really want to speak on, right, we have to wait um, equal opportunity um, fairness in our dealings um, with everyone and just practicing treating things on the merit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this may sound a bit, maybe a bit peripheral because we know that in organizations there are times when um, some other things may come to fore and we we'll find ourselves, you know, being thrown into some sort of, you know, mixed feelings around our ethics and our values and what we believe in. But then that's really what makes you a well-rounded HR professional, able to manage, you know, um, you know, interests that may come up in your workplace, right? Because those interests will come up, right? And then you hear sometimes there, there could be political, um, there could be some stakeholder interest coming out, but you should be able to know how to manage it and manage it appropriately, okay? So um, fairness, equality, um, equal opportunity, very important very important and then of course ensure that um, you treat things on merit and treat everybody um, as, as they should be treated um, okay i saw another question how can the hr department accept the staff and members of an organization um, Eyo, um i think uh, when i started out i made i mentioned something to say that um every hr professional who wants to succeed in an organization must begin to ask themselves some pertinent questions around why they are there. If you if you hope to grow in your in HR profession, you must begin to think about your business. You must begin to understand what makes your business tick and why are they existent. That way, when you're delivering services as HR, yes. you're meeting business, okay, the two must go together. Our service delivery as HR must always and part time meet our organizational needs. Now, if you don't know your organizational needs, then it becomes a problem. 
so how well do you know the business that you are working in or working for that's the first question to ask yourself if you're able to understand your business objectives the business needs then you will begin to ensure that your service delivery as HR is meeting those needs now when it comes to people right we know the trends now um, elijah with covid and hybrid working great resignation high attrition is all over the place not just in nigeria and if we're on hr here we would have heard of the japan movement is affecting most industries affecting me as well um yes. then the question is the question is how are we positioning ourselves as hr to ensure that we are serving our people better okay and there is no cast on stone answer to how we can serve our staff better okay there's no cast on stone answer what i tell people is as against looking for best practices and best standards and what is ideal let's begin to think of the best outcome in our service delivery in our processes what should be the best outcome that way we treat things on merit and independently so for staff if you're having attrition for instance you begin to evaluate and analyze your entire workforce to know what you can do better most companies are clamoring for hybrid working if your organization is open to hybrid working then of by all means make it happen but if you're in an organization where hybrid working is not an option everybody comes into the office monday to friday you still have to find a way to make it work then what that means is you have to find a way to ensure that in the workspace and the work environment your staff is happy your staff are happy um they have the work resources that they need to work and also you practice flexibility so when truly they need to be away from work you should be sensitive you should be flexible to allow them to attend to what needs to take them out of work so like i said is the right or wrong answer we need to always work with what should be the best outcome for us at the end of the day are we having a win-win am i winning as staff and is my organization winning as well as a business so hey, i hope that has your thank question you. thank you so much i'm very sure yes Ma. thank you um so much for your time uh this was a very intriguing section and i would love to i think to connect with you more on linkedin and get more insight and view myself better this is me being selfish, like I, I keep saying. And I'm sure um, the listeners out there would want to also reach out and engage with you more and because you are like our, I don't know how to put it, but you are there and we are just here. So I just want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate um, this moment. Um, thank you so much. And from all of us, um, please uh, do have a wonderful day.